wanted to just kind of get a general summary of your first season on campus. Um, COVID circumstances weren't what anyone expected, but what did what did you kind of take away from that 2020 experience and, and making that jump up to Power 5 football? You know, the COVID season was unfortunate for everybody. Um, I took away, you got to fight adversity no matter like what comes to you. So every day we came into practice, you know, it was different from what the players were usually experienced, but it was new to me. So I took every day like as if it was normal to me. And I just went out and I played as hard as I could. Mark Brennan. Jair, we've heard a lot of positive things from coaches and other players about you uh, this spring. What has the what has this all been like for you, and how much do you feel you, you've improved? It's been great for me. You know, I improved my game, learning different positions, learning the whole defense as a whole, from the D line to the linebackers to the safety. Just getting a a good mindset on what everybody's doing and how I fit into the scheme and different things and how can I make my plays when they come to me. Hey, Frank. Hey, Jer. I have a question, and I don't know if I have a good way to phrase it. Uh, how does a defensive back acquire instincts, or where, where do instincts come from when it comes to making plays on the ball? Well, your instincts... That's a tough question. Your instincts are just your natural natural reaction skills, you know. Uh, how, how you react to the ball when the ball is thrown. When you see a running back running out of the backfield, how you react. Um, that quick movement, you know, you got about a second and a half to make that decision. So I can say instincts is just that split second that you make that decision and what you do with it. Tony Collins? Jair, were you surprised at how much you played, especially early on last year, considering how little time you had relatively to learn the defense? And what, how much more comfortable do you feel now knowing all, all, that, all that you do about, about the schemes? No, I wasn't surprised at all. You know, I, I trained all season, all off season for this. Throughout my Juco career, I trained for this. So I came in expecting a starting job, actually, you know, and coach felt like it was best for me to get in in certain plays and, and minimize my reps here and there. And I adjusted to my role and I played my role for the team. Um, Hayes? Hey, Jair, appreciate it. Um, you always hear of, you know, the uh, jump from high school to college. In your case, you know, you came from Lackawanna. What was that like for you, that acclimation process? And when do you think you really started to get comfortable to the speed of the game last year? Well, you know, you prepare for the season in the fall, you know, in the beginning during summer camp. And I felt like that's where I was preparing for the speed, you know, going against the great quarterbacks we got here, prepared me to be able to maintain the speed of the game I did on the field when we played on Saturday. So I was pretty good with the speed of the game. Andre Snyder. Hey, Jair. Thanks for the time. Um, how nice or comforting is it to have Brisker back there with you? And on an unrelated note, where does your nickname Tig come from? Because I know everybody's calling you that now. Oh, um, man. It's, it's, it's been a blessing to play with Brisker, you know, coming from Juco and to Penn State. Both of us playing together, it's just, you know, it's like seeing a brother grow up. So being here with Brisker has been an unbelievable experience. Um, we get to grow together, we get to learn together, and play together. There's nothing better you can ask for. Um, the nickname Tig, uh, it comes from the show Winnie the Pooh. Uh, I used to jump around a lot as a kid, and uh, they used to call me Tigger. But as I got older, people just start calling me Tig, so... That's where the nickname Ted come from. Tyler Donahue? Eric, can you kind of take us uh, into the competitive nature of, of practice right now at safety? Uh, Jaquan's back, but everyone's looking closely at that other starting safety spot. What's it like on a day-to-day -day basis with the new coach? Of course, Dex has been a tremendous fit for us. You know, he, um, he's a guy who actually played the position, and he knows – 
the ins and outs of the position. So he's teaching us a lot. Um, the guys in this room right now, we are competing for a job. Uh, everybody in here is learning at a fast pace. They're adjusting to the new coach very well. And they're playing, they're playing at a unbelievable pace, you know. So all the way from the one to the bottom, it's been a great, it's been a great experience to play with Dex and really get to learn this defense. And everybody's competing for that job. So. Mark Brennan. Jair, why did you decide to take the JUCO route? And, uh, um, you know, in retrospect, how well has it all worked out for you with the success you've had at Lackawanna and now, you know, what you're doing at Penn State? Uh, I was reached out to by Coach Billy Reese from um, Lackawanna College. Uh, he asked me to come there and play, play for him, and I didn't have anywhere else to go around the time. So I just decided to go the JUCO route, and I don't regret it at all. It's been an unbelievable experience there. It taught me a lot. I got a chance to compete for a national title, and uh, it's been great, you know. Keith Franks? Hey, JR, you mentioned learning all the positions on the defense and what everybody's doing. What do you think your best position is, and where do you think you excel the most in the secondary? I think I can play all the positions uh, very well. Uh, where where the coaches want me at is where I'm going to play at, you know. So wherever they feel is best for me to play, where I can make the best impact for the defense is where I'm going to play. Tommy Collins? Yeah, your coach Duda and coach Reese still kind of rave about the season that uh, Jaquan had his last year there. I think it was – uh, 18. What do you remember from that year and, and, and how, how amazing was some of the stuff that he was able to accomplish there? One thing about Jaquan was that like he was always a leader. He always lived up to his name all on and off the field. So everything Coach Duda raved about is, is true about Jaquan. You know, he's going to go out there, he's going to play his hardest, he's going to watch the film, he's going to lead from the front and I can't be more proud of him. Tobias Woodward. Um, so far this spring, what has been at least one highlight that you guys have been able to put together as far as just getting to know each other and seeing how the team has developed, particularly with your line group? One highlight has been the off-season workout, the winter workouts, you know, that constant grind. Doing these workouts, that's that's very hard. These workouts are not easy, you know, to get to look left and right and see people struggling just as much as you can and people are fighting just as much as you can to finish this workout has been my biggest highlight, you know. We come together more as a as a unit, as a brotherhood, and uh, it's been great, you know, seeing people determined to win, determined to compete. And when practice is over, we're still brothers at the end of the day. So that's been my highlight for this season so far. Max Ralph. Hey, Jair. How are you taking having a season under your belt and getting a full off season this year to kind of get your footing and become more of a voice and a leader in that safety room? I'm taking it step by step, learn the defense more, push myself in the weight room, trying to maximize my potential as much as I can. Um, listening to Coach Dex, getting his in input on everything. And just really trying to build my character and, build, and maximize myself as much as possible. Andre Snyder, Bear, um, who leads you guys in takeaways this spring? Do you know? I know you always keep track of the takeaway king. I think Coach Smith calls it. Um, I'm not sure right now. I'm sorry. Tyler Donahue. We had uh, Parker Washington on, on the call with us this morning. I'm curious to see from last fall to this spring, what, what does he like to deal with on the practice field on a daily basis? What kind of problems does he present for a defense? Parker, he's a great player. You know, he's been a great player since I spotted him during the summer of last season. Um, he creates matchup problems. He's quick. He's fast. He's smart. 
he's he's definitely one, a great player, and I and I knew this that since I spotted Parker in the summer. Mark Brennan. Coach Dex was obviously a, a great player at the college level, but great players don't, don't always make great coaches. How has he been able to take that that part of the, the his past and, and make it and make him into uh, the coach he is? To me, Dex is a great coach. You know, he's smart. He's funny. You know, he 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 gets the players playing the way you want them to play. You know, a lot of people not nervous for Coach Dex. You know, they're they're comfortable with him. They're playing the game that he wants them to play, and they're having fun doing it. So it's been a great experience for Coach Dex. T. Frank. Hey, Jair, I hope you don't mind me saying you seem like a rather composed, self-possessed sort of guy. Where do you where does that come from? What do you attribute that to? Is there a person in your life or something that made you more confident than I think most people might outwardly show? Uh, I can say my composure comes from my mother. You know, growing up, watch my mother do things and, and just be so composed about it, not showing no emotions and and going about things the right way. I just, you know, she's been my hero since I was younger. So everything I've seen from her, I try to imitate as best as I could. And I feel like that's what made me the person I am today. Tony Collins? Jair, obviously you, your goal is to win the starting job and that's Sutherland's goal and it's a lot of people's goals. But what what do you think you have to do? What what, what will separate you in, in, in that race in your mind? What do you have to do to win it? I just have to keep playing within the defense, you know, playing as hard as I could and studying and, and enjoying myself in the day, you know. When, when it's all said and done, Coach Dex is going to pick the best person he feel is best for the position. And whether it's me or whether whoever it is, you know, my role in the team is whatever the coach wants me to be. So I'll be straight with whatever the outcome is. Jer, uh, what do you remember about your first camp at, at Lackawanna? Because Coach Duda recalled there were like 20-plus DBs, and you kind of came out of nowhere, in his words, to, to win the job at corner then. Uh, um, Lackawanna, it was uh, a great experience for me. Um, like Coach Duda said, he's absolutely right. Um, I was not on his radar, his recruiting radar at all. I walked on Lackawanna looking to compete for a job, looking to compete for a starting spot. And I just went out there and I played my hardest that one practice. And Coach Duna recognized me and everybody else started to recognize how talented I was. And from there, it's history. Mark Brennan? So how much have you been driven by that kind of underdog mentality uh, that, you know, proved people wrong? I've been an underdog my whole life, so... It's, it's more of a mindset now than, like, a mentality thingy. So, like, I go into practice. I go into places I've never been before with just that mentality mindset. Like, I'm an underdog here. Nobody expects me to do anything. You know, I have to earn everything I get. So that's been my mentality since high school. Before I got to Lackawanna, just earn everything you get. Nothing is given. Tyler Donahue? Sorry, if I could ask about a couple of the uh, comers in the defensive backfield. Uh, John Dixon transferring in from South Carolina and, and Kalen King enrolling early. What are your early impressions of those guys? Kalen King and Johnny, are, they're, they're great players. You know, they came in unexpectedly ready, you know, um, from the door. They've been great players studying film getting ready for practice, just their preparation as young players to come in, stretch early, in their notes, preparing for practice before everybody else get there has been the reason why they've been so successful this spring. John Sauber. Jair, you mentioned that you guys can sort of play comfortably and, and free under uh, Dex. What, what does that change for you on the field, and how does that make things easier on you out there? You know, knowing, just knowing your coach got your back, no matter what, it allows you to play freely. It allows you to, to not play a worry, do your job, 
know you as Sam. And it's just it's more of a, a close friend, you know. A close friend is out there coaching you. He's putting you through everything. He's getting you ready. You're not going to be nervous. You're not going to be anxious. You're just going to play your game. And that's about it. Three more. Tony Collins. Here, going back to being the underdog, quote unquote. It, is it frustrating? Was it ever frustrating for you to be the underdog? I mean, your your high school film was was pretty good. You've you've always been a pretty good player. Is it, it, it was it was it a tough thing to have to kind of continually prove yourself and prove yourself all over and over again? No, it was not tough for me at all. You know, I knew that I was the man in high school, but. Maybe in a different state, they didn't know me. Maybe in a different city, they didn't know me. So everywhere I went, I always knew that I had to prove myself and prove my worth. Audrey Snyder? Uh, Jair, what's been the most impressive play that somebody's made this spring, whether it's defense, offense, doesn't matter? Honestly, I honestly don't know. You know, it's been a lot of great plays. Everybody made plays this spring. That's been unbelievable. Um, I can't really rate them from best to worst, you know. Last question, Mark Brennan. Dyer, what will it mean to you uh, to be able to be able to play in front of fans this week, uh, hopefully if everything goes right, and then if when a season rolls around, having not experienced that, if they're able to get them into Beaver Stadium, what's it going to be like for, for a young guy like you? It's going to be a great experience. I've been to Penn State games before. I've seen the fans there. Um, I always wanted to play in front of the fans. So when I didn't get the opportunity last season, you know, it was kind of a disappointment, but I was pretty much good with whatever because I went to Juco route. We didn't have nothing but 100 people out there. So... It's going to be an unbelievable experience for me to play in front of fans.